So in this video, I'm going to focus, uh, I'm still going to come back to a little bit of the cycloalkanes, but I'm going to focus instead on what we call the halogens. Um, so I'm going to write the four halogens that we're going to be seeing, uh, and we're going to be calling them a particular naming system. So anytime you have bromine in the molecule, it's going to call it bromo. Cl is going to be chloro. F is going to be fluoro. And I is going to be ido. Okay, so some of these molecules are going to have these in them. Okay, so let me draw a molecule with some halogens in them and kind of show you, again, the good news is it's going to follow the same um, system that we have seen before. Okay, so draw this molecule. All right, so I have the longest chain and I'm doing this on purpose so we're not spending our time just trying to find the longest chain. I have essentially five in a row, okay? So I know that this is gonna end in pentane. All right, now I have bromine as a branch, chlorine as a branch, and CH3, that's a methyl group. You're gonna sometimes see me write it that way. You don't have to. I'm just trying to overemphasize that that's my methyl group. So um, what side do I start numbering, left or right? Well, look at the alphabet, okay? Bromo is gonna come before chloro, before fluoroboroido. Okay, I did put them in the order of the alphabet. I did not put them in the order of what they are on the periodic table. So that means if there is a tie, and because both the chloro and the bromo are one off from the first carbon, I'm gonna start numbering on the left side. Now, if I happen to have this methyl group on this chlorine, and there was a double substitution here, then I would actually start on the right. So if I have a tie, essentially, it's gonna to go to the alphabet. If I have more branches on one side versus the other, you're gonna go with the more branch side, okay? So this is gonna start with uh, two bromo. Then alphabet-wise, it's going to go four chloro, so it doesn't go number-wise, it goes alphabet. And if you run out of space, do like a little carrot thing, because I do this all the time. Um, and then do a three-methyl. Okay, three-methyl. So two-bromo, four chloro, three-methyl pentane is going to be the name of this molecule. Now, how do you do the cyclos? Okay, well the cyclos, again, you're going to go with the cyclo is going to be the longest chain, so we don't need to worry about that. But what if we have something like this? All right, so we have fluoro, we have bromo, and then we have two carbons over here, which is ethyl. Okay, so when I start to mix up some of the um, branches that you could get, you do have to consider it in terms of the alphabet. So bromo is going to come first, then who's going to come next? Ethyl, and then fluoro, okay? So how do you do the naming system on this one? And I picked this one on purpose because it does make it a little bit more complex. So it's going to end in cyclopentane. That's not up for discussion. But what I want to consider is where am I going to start numbering? That's pretty easy as well. Bromo is going to come first, so that's going to be the first carbon. But here's the tricky part. Do I go and get the fluoro? Do I go counterclockwise or do, do I do clockwise? Well, you might think that I'm gonna go clockwise because the alpha group should be the next thing I go in the alphabet, which is not a bad way to approach it. So let's see if I write that name according to that naming system. So one bromo, then it goes three ethyl, then it goes five fluoro, and then it goes cyclopentane. Okay, and you think you're done. Well, actually you want to consider if I named it the other way, meaning this becomes a two, this is a three, that's a four, that's a five, what would that naming system be? So that's a one bromo, that would be a four ethyl, and then that would be a two fluoro cyclopentane. All right, so which name is right? Well, Bromos are both one, okay? I got a three and a four and a five and a two. So what you want to do is add the three and the five and you get eight, 
the four and the two, you get a six. The one that you have the smallest number is going to be the naming that you're going to do. Okay. I'm not going to give you a lot of these, but some people come up with their own um, examples. And then we start to have these conversations. So I thought I'd throw one out there to kind of get you thinking about that. All right. So uh, because I have a little bit more time here, I want us to flip back to what we call molecular, structural, and condensed formula. So if you would go to that section, just flip back a page. So I alluded to this in the um, beginning of this note packet. Molecular structure um, is just going to give you how many carbons, hydrogens, and we're also going to talk about oxygens as well. Structural is going to draw it all out for you so you can see who's bonded to who. And then condensed formula, I like this one. You will see it. Uh, I have it a couple times in my um, practice that I give you guys. It does give you some interesting information. Like I know there's a branch off that second carbon in the middle by how it's laid out. And you will sometimes see me write CH3 or CH2, CH3 to kind of show you that it is in that format. So structural and the condensed does give you a lot more information. Molecular really doesn't. So if we go down to this example, this is kind of where we're going to go with all of this when we get into more of the functional groups. So C4H10O, if I have four carbons, I need to find um, what is that oxygen going to be, okay? Is it going to be an ether? Is it going to be an aldehyde? Is it going to be a... Um, alcohol. So let's say I draw it as an alcohol. Well, if I draw it as an alcohol, the O has to have an H attached to it. And then I need to count my hydrogens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this could be a legitimate structure for that molecular formula. Well, could I do a double bonded oxygen? Okay. I do have an oxygen in this molecule. So what we're going to be working towards is, with a molecular formula, it sure doesn't give you what exactly you're looking at. So if I put a C double bond O there, I have four carbons, but I have the right number of hydrogens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, I don't. So that can't be the structure. So again, molecular formulas are important, and we're going to use them in a couple different places in organic chemistry, but it really does not give you a lot of clear information. 